Hey everybody, I uh, just wanted to make this video about John the Baptist, um, why even John the Baptist is such a central figure in uh, the whole New Testament story, and I just want to kind of use him to, to poke some serious holes in the arguments for um, the religion, so, because he really does, he pokes a lot of holes in the story, so, the first question is, how much did John know about Jesus, and uh, and when did they meet? Because this diverges depending on which gospel you're reading. Um, so Luke one forty four says that um, they met while their mothers were still pregnant. They're cousins, uh, supposedly. You know, fetus John the Baptist jumps for joy, you know, as if a, a baby kicking is something to be considered miraculous. Uh, now, John one twenty nine and one thirty six, John recognizes Jesus as he's about to baptize him. Uh, so, this means they haven't met yet. And then John's like, oh my god, I know who you are, you're the Messiah. But John is contradicted by Luke 7, 18 through 23, where um, John actually sends two disciples to go meet Jesus uh, and ask if he's the Messiah, if he's the one they've been waiting for. Um, it's different because, like, I mean, that means John didn't know. Then there's the case of the baptism, and this is was a serious thorn in the church's side for centuries. For this reason, um, Matthew 3.11 states that John baptized for uh, repentance. Someone who had sinned would go get baptized to be cleansed. Uh, it's sort of a, the whole baptismal idea is sort of a throw off of the, the mikvah, um, the, the purification pools that these small Jewish communities would have had, where if you committed a trespass, you were considered unclean, you had to go through the mikvah and completely submerge your body and clean yourself. Um, but this is something that John started doing, and there were, there were other Baptists at the time who would baptize people in rivers and um, cleanse them of sin. So, but this raises a question, if it's for repentance, and Jesus is, um, you know, he's He's supposed to be pure and uh, sinless, then why would he need to be baptized for repentance? And that has really bugged the church for a long time. Uh, so Matthew says that it was to fulfill all righteousness. This is Matthew three fourteen and fifteen. But other passages indicate that Jesus believed he was not without sin, uh, namely Mark 10.18, Luke 18.19. Um, and there's a, there's a serious issue with, uh, because of Luke, as I mentioned in Luke. Um, because Luke, the Gospel of Luke claims to be chronological in Luke 1.3. And if that's true, then you have to follow the chain of events. If that's the case, Jesus was not even baptized by John, because John would have already been in prison by the time Jesus was baptized. And that's uh, actually Luke three twenty through twenty one. And if you go back, you'll see Jesus was uh, baptized after it talks about John being imprisoned. Now. It should be known that the followers of John the Baptist did not traditionally become the followers of Jesus. They did not become Christian. They were not early Christians. There was a cult of John the Baptist for several centuries into uh, the Common Era, until they were wiped out after the um, solidification of the church. And, I mean, like, his, his ministry 
remained faithful for centuries. You know, they believe that you know, John, not necessarily was the Messiah, but was ringing in the Messiah. And because their beliefs didn't really center around Jesus, they didn't believe Jesus was the Messiah, and that's why they were eradicated by early Christians. Um, I have a little time, so I'm going to touch on a couple other things. Um, the first is the Last Supper. Um, Matthew 26, 17, Mark 14, 12, and Luke 22, 7 place it on the first day of Passover. But John 19, 14 says it was the day before, the day before Passover. So which day was it? Was it the, you know, the evening of, you know, Friday evening, Saturday? Or was it Thursday evening, Friday? Um, and that's, I mean, that, that mucks up the whole story. You know, if it's on the wrong day, then it's the whole situation. Not to, I mean, not that the story doesn't muck itself up enough with, uh, the whole prophecy of Jesus being dead for three days and then rising, but really it's like, all right, he was crucified on um, on Friday and then buried Saturday and then rose Sunday. I mean, you have a best a day and a half, not three days, three nights. You know, two days and one night or something like that. It's absurd. Or two nights and one day, sorry. Um, and then there's the Eucharist. The Eucharist is really weird because it's such a stolen idea from Mithraism. So 1 Corinthians 11.23 says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. Now here, Paul's asserting that he invented the Eucharist, that the Eucharist came to him as an idea because Jesus shared it with him. Um, and I mean, he, in Galatians 1, 11 through 12, he says that he's never taught anything but what Jesus has revealed to him. Now, the problem is that the Eucharist is borrowed from Mithraism. It was a contemporary religion, um, starting in Persia. It was definitely present in the Levin at the time. Um, but the liturgy for it states this. He who will not eat of my body and drink my blood so that he will be made one with me and I with him, the same shall not know salvation. Mm -hmm. That sounds, I mean, I grew up, um, my mother was Episcopalian, my father was Catholic, I grew up in between the two churches. Um, and I mean, both have strong Eucharist ties. I mean, you know, communion is given in both of those churches. And that sounds like liturgy from Catholicism and Episcopalianism. So it's, it's very similar. And it was definitely taken from, from that. Um, the thing is, uh, Paul could have easily um, adopted it. And so could have the, the writers of the Synoptic Gospels and John, and kind of made it all fit, because they knew that this sort of thing was happening in other places. And, I mean, when you adopt customs, it's easier to bring people into your faith. That's why the Catholics have so many saints. Can't beat them, join them. Um, I'm not going to get into... The next thing I'm just going to talk about, uh, which is uh, Judas Iscariot and the whole problem with his story. But I will cover that in the next video, I promise. And I'm actually glad I got through way more stuff than I thought I was going to. So until next time.